Hello, boys and girls, and happy Saturday. It is hot out there today, so whatever cold front we had must have passed us by, but that's all right, because we have a little stack of envelopes to open today, and we have the drink of unboxing champions to help get us through these troubled times. All right, so what do we have today? We have one from Movie Mars, uh, an Indian Trail, North Carolina, which is quite close to here. I'm impressed. Um, let's see, what do we have? We have a uh, awesome selection here. It kind of goes hand in hand with what we were looking at uh, yesterday with uh, the Rudy Ray Moore films and uh, Sweet Sweet Back and all that stuff. We got uh, Foxy Brown with uh, Pam Greer, which is pretty cool. Because um, not only did such uh, black exploitation films, not only did they become a pretty important and iconic and influential genre in and of themselves, uh, you know, with Martin Van Peebles and Rudy Ray Moore, but they also made stars out of people like Pam Greer, who would go on to be in all kinds of you know, great things like uh, Cleopatra Jones and um, Black Mama, White Mama, um, all kinds of, uh, Sheba Baby, I think is the other one. Uh, there, there's a ton of them, and obviously once Tarantino came along, then um, it was all about uh, Jackie Brown. And um, as you can see, it's got a reversible cover here. I don't believe a slip cover, you know, because not every arrow or whatever has a slip. And I'm, I believe the UK exclusive ones, they tend not to have slips. Um, but anyway, um, you know, just it is nice to have the option because you can get bored with one cover and so you can do something different. And of course, our little handout here for these other cool arrow releases. Um, but yeah, this is an, a UK exclusive one. I think that's a little bit cooler, but yeah, it's the Arrow release of that, and so glad to have that in the collection as we are charting our, you know, evolution of uh, black cinema and kind of the some of the earliest uh, star-making, you know, uh, films that were influential. Um, anyway, we got uh, Terry Hout, Indiana, and I probably butchered the pronunciation of that, but that's all right. Uh, what else do we have? We got something with a slip cover, so already I'm a happy guy. Ah, uh, yes. Um, the Gone with the Wind that was, uh, taken off of HBO Max, and I hope, you know, to put up soon. Uh, this is actually the Walmart exclusive one, uh, the four-disc special edition there, the 75th anniversary edition. Uh, I used to have the 70th anniversary box set like the red velvet one that's i mean every copy of gone with the wind that's out there now uh it's really pricey because there was that big run on all the physical copies that were out there because hbo max took it off the streaming service for hope again hopefully not forever but um yeah it's one of those uh things where it's one of the you gotta snag these things up when you can because you just never know what's gonna come along in life uh, that or you know whatever you never know what's gonna happen to where something uh, makes your one of your favorite movies unavailable um, but we've got our feature disc here we got our special features and we've got um, the gone with, we got gone with the wind on two DVDs here which is interesting um, and yeah so I'm just glad to have it back to be honest with you because um, controversy no controversy uh, Gone with the Wind quite simply is one of the best films ever made it's I think a pretty towering achievement of, of classic uh, golden age Hollywood uh, it's a touchstone of epic filmmaking of romance films of dramas, um, the character, the richness of the characters, how well they're fleshed out, um, you know, all of that's wonderful, and yeah, it doesn't do the best job of, you know, portraying slavery or anything, the horrors of it, 
at the same time, it's nowhere near the worst at it. Um, like, it's not Song of the South, you know, which, I mean, technically, I think that takes place um, just after the Civil War during, like, Reconstruction, but still, like, I could understand more of why Disney wouldn't want anything to do with that, at least in the United States. They don't care in other countries, but not in the United States. Um, you know, I can see what I can understand the case for why they want nothing to do with Song of the South as opposed to Gone with the Wind, which it is from the South's perspective, um, and it's all about how for them, you know, their way of life, their charmed life, their you know privileged life of being wealthy landowners and slave owners, um, that it all came down, you know, came crumbling down upon them. Uh, my big thing with this, with a story like that, is that I do think it is an important perspective to capture, you know, the the perspective of the side that lost, you know, like a good example of that in Germany is actually Das Boot, which, um, where are you? You're, uh, oh, it's, it's in there, I'll, never mind. Anyway, Das Boot, you know, it was a, uh, war film in, uh, set, take place in, it took place in a German U-boat, you know, a submarine, and that was, um, you know, at the time when Nazi, it was World War II, Nazi Germany is pretty clearly, you know, it's the, pretty clearly losing the war at this point, and so these, what, what's so great about that film is not only is it really tense and extremely well made, but it does really humanize the ordinary German soldier who's not really an ideologue per se, he's just trying to do what he feels is best to serve his country at that time, and and they're not even all that crazy about, um, you know, the current regime, you know, it's pretty clear that they're like, you know, just tired of all this nonsense, but you know, they're trying to do their duty and everything, so it's like, you know, I, I think that it's important to have something that does humanize the other side in some form or fashion. You don't have to justify their actions, and certainly this being of its time, it doesn't, you know, it's, no, it's not 12 years a slave in terms of going into the horrors of slavery, because it was an, a barbaric, horrible, immoral institution that, you know, people that, you know, they, yeah, maybe they there were plenty of masters that were comparatively uh you know less cruel than others or even kind but they you know are still benefiting from a system that's horrible and oppressive and dehumanizing and had all these lasting effects that we're still talking about all these years later blah 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 but um at any rate it's like i do think it's important to that i don't even think it's all that pro south either i mean it it definitely is all about that kind of romanticized version of the old south that comes crumbling down upon them um but you know they established pretty early on that the people that you know were full of piss and vinegar thinking that they being southern gentlemen could go kick the yankees asses you know they they make it pretty clear early on that those guys are full of shit you know and rhett butler calls them on it pretty quickly and even um you know ashley you know he he calls it right from the beginning that you know it's just going to be painful and bloody and by the time it's over no one's going to know what it was all about so i mean i don't i don't think it's as pro south as people think it is or some people think it is um but i mean sure you know put it up with a disclaimer if you want i mean because again it's not the most uh it doesn't go into the things that we would go into nowadays we do have other films out there that do do that and you know guess what if you want to learn the real story just read a history book which is what you should do no matter what kind of historical film you're talking about but again masterpiece of epic filmmaking masterpiece of the romance genre uh very richly fleshed out characters and not to mention one other reason why you shouldn't censor this film or forget about it on top of it just being a great film is that um hattie mcdaniel who plays mammy in the film was the first African-American and an African-American woman at that to win an Oscar, and uh, and well-deserved, because she killed it in this film. And uh, so, yeah, it's, you know, and that was pretty progressive for the time. Um, and if anything, David O. Selznick, relative to the standards of the time, he removed a lot of the harsh, the really, really bad racial epithets from the book. Um, you know, he removed it from the film because he felt sympathy for 
the struggle of African Americans because he could see what was happening to Jews in Europe because keep in mind Nazi Germany was going crazy at that time America hadn't entered the war yet so I mean relative to the standards of the time he did he did his best you know more or less not at all what we would consider to be good nowadays but still it's worth a mention um anyway rant over this wasn't really a rant but whatever explanation over um Hayfield Minnesota what have you got for us um, oh yeah, um, we got a film that is based on an, uh, Edgar Allan Poe story, I believe, and it is Stonehurst Asylum with the lovely, uh, Kate Beckinsale, who actually, come to think of it, she could actually fit in, uh, like, if you ever wanted to have, like, a modern equivalent of, like, a Vivian Lee, at least physically, you know, she'd be a good candidate for it, and also having been British and everything, um, which, again, that, not to talk about Gone with the Wind even more, but they, uh, they had done such a long talent search for Scarlet, and then eventually they settled on Vivian Lee, um, you know, and she fought really hard for the role, but, you know, at first it caused, like, quite a lot of hubbub, uh, because they were like, oh, you know, you couldn't find an American girl to to play her because keep in mind that this that the um gone with the wind book was basically like the lord of the rings of its time as far as like or harry potter or some uh massive phenomenon book that everybody read um and so obviously uh hopes were high and anticipation was high um but uh you know that's that was just an interesting thing and also kate beckinsale is british as well uh, she is actually very well educated. I think she went to Oxford, if I'm not mistaken, um, and um, you know I think was a had a pretty good rooting in Shakespeare, which is why she was a hero in Kenneth Branagh's adaptation of Much Ado About Nothing, um, which I have not seen yet, but I would like to. Um, I have seen the 2012 um, Joss Whedon one, but I need to see his. Anyway, Stonehurst Asylum here. I regret to say I've not seen it, but I love Jim Sturgis. I love Kate Beckinsale, Ben Kingsley, Michael Caine, you know, Brendan Gleeson, all these great actors. Especially Michael Caine. I mean, I think he's, like, up here as far as acting talent. And it has a slipcover, which is hard to find now. And it wasn't expensive, so how about that? Uh, Paris, California. What have you got for us? Um... I think I know which one this is, um, yes. So, I managed to find, um, so these two films here, I managed to find them together for a good price. Um, one of these you've seen already, but you haven't seen it with the slip cover, which is Joker. We've already talked about it. I still have the custom cover for it, but I just happened, and the person tore into it just enough to get the digital out, which, whatever, I don't really use the digital copies all that much. I, I still redeem them just in case I need to ever, you know, make use of them, uh, you know, via my Fandango account or something, but anyway, um, I sold the one that came just like this, and it wasn't even all, in all that good condition, so this is better. I'll figure out what I'm going to do with the custom cover because, well, you can't really see it when the slip is on here, which I do like this slip cover picture better than the Best Buy exclusive steel book that I wanted to get, which is super hard to find now. Um, you know, I did like the, I do like the custom cover that I have, um, but I'll figure out what I'm gonna do with it because, as you can see, if I, I can't do the thing where you show it on the inside because of the, the black uh, 4K case, so I might end up selling it or something, I don't know. But at any rate, um, you know, glad to have it with the slipcover, though, because what are we on this channel? Slipcover psychopaths, you're damn right. And the second thing, the reason why I jumped on it was It Chapter 2. Now, I have the first one, and I have the uh, 1990 TV miniseries with Tim Curry as uh, Pennywise the Dancing Clown. And um, I, I saw it chapter one in the theater but for whatever reason just i guess life difficulties i never got around to seeing chapter two and i wanted to get the best buy steel book but the 
kind of the combination of these two, the price point was too good to pass up. Plus, I did like this cover quite a lot. I mean, the, the Best Buy Steelbook was good, but it wasn't like the best thing I've ever seen, and this was pretty awesome. Uh, I've not seen it, but I, I mean, I know the, you know, having seen the miniseries, I know basically how it ends, but like, just curious to see how they do it, because um, It Chapter 1 was, I think, quite a lot scarier than the miniseries could ever hope to be, Not which I love Tim Curry as uh, Pennywise, but... Um, I think the best thing that the first one did was that they told the story linearly, unlike, which I guess the book kind of jumps around in time, as does the miniseries, but to me that kind of makes the tension go away, because we know that these kids are going to live to grow up, um, but, you know, the casual viewer for It Chapter 1 wouldn't know that, and so then, and it just kind of is a nice division there, childhood, adulthood, you know. I don't know. I think that's a better storytelling device, personally. Last up, Newburgh, Indiana. We're on the home stretch now, so bring us home strong, please. <sighs> Give us something that we can write home about. Well, we've got something that's wrapped up in parchment paper, almost like it's from a butcher shop. Do you suppose it could be Grandma's severed foot? Well, we're gonna find out. If it's not Grandma's severed foot, I'm going to be disappointed. Um, let's see. Oh, yeah. Um, it is. Uh, speaking of Best Buy exclusive things, this was something that I had wanted to get for such a long time because uh, I do absolutely adore this film. Like, I cannot tell you how much I loved it, which was uh, Whiplash with uh, J.K. Simmons and Miles Teller. Now, I personally, like, for a long time, I never really liked Miles Teller all that much because all the characters he played I thought were all a bunch of dickheads. And, you know, um, he just never really did anything for me except for when I saw this film, I really could see that he committed to this part. And it's all about... As a creative person, like, this film really speaks to me because it's all it's all about um, pushing, pushing yourself to becoming someone or something great in your craft and well the personal sacrifices that you have to be willing to make to get there plus how there's a fine line between pushing someone to be great and also being a sadist and that's what jk simmons is um but they they have like in it they do have a master apprentice relationship except it is a highly highly destructive one uh, it is not at all what you want as far as nurturing talent. Um, but at the same time, it's really Miles Teller's commitment to his craft and his just obsessive drive to be a great jazz drummer that I think that's what allows him to kind of overcome the bullshit that he gets flung at him throughout the entire film. Um, and I can relate to that. You know, and I think a lot of creative people can relate to that. It's all about just how bad do you want it and how how much are you willing to put your your blood sweat and tears into your craft and you know he like he gives up on his relationship and he just fully commits himself to excellence and i mean i can i can relate to that i wouldn't have given up on my relationship but i would also hope that my relationship would enrich my pursuits rather than diminishing them which i guess he must have felt the uh, other way but if I felt that way, then I probably wouldn't get into a relationship. I would only want to get into one that I felt like it was helping me. But at any rate, yeah, it, it was had a lot of significance for me. Anyway, quite the eclectic uh, assortment here. But uh, yeah, so stay tuned. We are going to have some stuff arriving uh, tomorrow, even though it's Sunday, because, well, it's coming via Amazon, and Amazon apparently doesn't care about that. Um, but anyway, uh, so if you like this, then please like, share, subscribe, hit the bell icon, set phasers to stun, warp factor 5. I will see you in the next video, and I'm gonna try and cool down here with my lovely, uh, drink of Unboxing Champions.